Hi, I'm Zach with CoreXL, and today what we're going to talk about is the serratus muscle and why it's not important for fixing shoulder pain. Before we go into the serratus, I'm going to show you a testimonial from one of my clients that I fixed with winged scapula. And also keep in mind that I do offer one-on-one -on -one private sessions with me, and we also have an app, a rehab app, on our, on our website. I had uh, numerous sort of subluxations, and then one time a complete dislocation. Like if you try to put your shirt on or throw any type of ball, the shoulder would just dislocate, correct? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I went to go and see an orthopedic surgeon who uh, did an MRI. He said I had a tear in my labrum and that if, uh, yeah, if things didn't sort out, sort itself out, then I would have to have an operation. And we had worked with you for three months and now you're back lifting, you're back boxing, you're boxing, back playing rack racquetball, like all the things you didn't think were possible, you're now doing, correct? Yeah, I can throw a ball again. Um, I'm practicing the handstand. I'm doing full-on sparring sessions. Uh, I even played field hockey again. Which when I are you going to spar me? Remember, I bought. <laughs> well, if um, I beat you, then no, I don't mess with the Dutch. I don't mess with the Dutch. <laughs> a lot of people with winged scapula, they have pain in the front of their shoulder. They also have a lot of clicking and popping when they're moving their arm around. And like you saw in the testimonial, severe cases where the shoulder will actually dislocate. So let's just understand a little bit about the scapula, okay? And then I'll go in to why it's not that effective. Basically what the scapula is gonna do is, is if we are involved basically in upward rotation, okay? Of the scapula here, upward rotation. It also protracts the scapula forward. So if we're bench pressing and we move this way, okay? it helps with that as well. Another thing that the serratus anterior does is it downward depresses the scapula, okay, along with the lower traps. So it's gonna take it and it's gonna move your scapula down this way. So basically the theory behind most PTs is if someone has winged scap, well, if I fix the serratus anterior, then that's gonna push it up against the spine. You're not gonna be able to fit your hands underneath it anymore because that is the major anchoring point of the scapula. So what I found is, as far as winged scapula go, I found that the serratus anterior plays the least important role in fixing winged scapula. And what I see is clients coming to me and they still have winged scapula, their shoulders are still rounded forward, and they've been doing serratus anterior, they've been doing band work like this, and they've been doing scap work like this. Basically they're doing, you know, the ones on the ball like this, or they go on the floor, and then they go like this with, to, to do the serratus anterior. And also they do like protraction exercises this way. <clears throat> and what I see is, is that actually increasing the shoulders rounding forward. If you have your shoulders rounding forward and your scaps are going like this, and then you're doing different protraction exercises this way and upward rotation of the scapula and going up this way, all that's doing is, is just pushing your shoulders more forward and you get zero results. So the main thing that PTs miss is, is, is actually correcting the humerus head first. And that's what we focus on. What I want to do is, this thing's, the humerus head's, when you have winged scap, the humerus head's floating up like this. It's floating up and it's, it's floating forward like this. So, great. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna train the serratus anterior and basically I'm gonna keep this in the same position. But if I focus on the humerus head, and I focus on the muscles that are gonna bring the humerus head down and back. Well, now when I put the humerus head in position, that's gonna lay the scapula in better position. And then once you correct that, now you can go back in and you can start training the serratus anterior. And what's funny is, is that the people that come to me and they've been doing like two or three months of serratus work, you know, here's the serratus right here they have nothing there. So they didn't even train the serratus. All they did is train their, their pec minor, their pecs, the front of their shoulder. And that's how I know that you can't, even, you can't even get into the anterior serratus and even develop these muscles here until you actually get the humerus head in position and, the, and develop the muscles that we're gonna talk about next. So now I'm gonna show you the different pieces that you need to work and I'm gonna show you the exercise. We're just gonna do some quick 30 second, one minute exercise to show you. And if you wanna learn more about the technique, you can use our app, okay? Or you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Go, just go to the details of the video and all those links are there. So let's look at the first part, okay? What I wanna do is I wanna develop this piece right here of the rear delt, okay? 
okay, this little section here. And we do that with the thumb down raise, okay, very simple exercise. And we're going to go into that right now on the bench. We're going to grab underneath here, we're going to turn our hips. See how I turn my foot open? But you really want to have this feeling that you're open. We're going to pull our hand back this way, we're going to point the thumb down. And then again, I'm not going to be in line with the shoulder, I'm going to be a little bit behind the shoulder. It's a move on the same angle as my hip line. So my hips are kind of in this slant position here. You see how it moves on that, that plane of the hips. It just comes right to the top of the shoulder line. And if you start losing it, just stay even lower. Maybe you just want to go right into here. Okay, the next exercise is delt backs. And you may have seen the pants pulls. The delt backs is kind of our starting position. It's much easier so that so clients don't jack up and get up into their traps. Okay, this is an easier start point. And what we're trying to work is, is so we work that with the thumb down raise right here. This one works, see that bottom section of the rear delt? That's what we're gonna work next. Okay, and we're gonna show you that right now with this clip here. We're gonna come, we're gonna touch right below our pocket line, the side front of our hip. We're gonna pull our wrist back. We're gonna push our elbow out just like this. Once I touch that side front of the hip and I'm in good position, then I'm gonna come out to the side like two, one to two inches and I'm just gonna hold it. And now we're gonna come a little bit down and then back to that spot. And this is when it really starts to turn on. And look here, look at the shoulder. See how the shoulder stays down when I'm moving. I don't go back like this. And now the next exercise, okay, you see the, this is the Terry's Major. And if you go into a mirror and you, and you do this position, you'll notice that most likely if you have winged scap, or if you just have shoulder problems in general, you're not even gonna see this muscle here at all. There's gonna be no development. And a lot of people, it actually looks like, if they have winged scap, it looks like this is developed, but it's just their scap pushing out and there's just no muscle there. So just keep that in mind. You gotta really form that, that, that triangle shape right there. Right leg up, right leg over to the side a little bit, face forward, forearm vertical, pull down about three quarters so I can slip a hand through my rib and my elbow, forearm vertical, pull the shoulder blades back and down, push down with the shoulder. I'm really activating this muscle by pushing this shoulder down and back. You want to feel this one, you want to feel this one right through here when you're doing it, okay? Like right in the back of the armpit, that's how you know you're doing it correctly and feeling the right spot. You shouldn't feel anything in the front of the shoulder. And when this is just a general PT exercise, there is a little bit of technique to this. You're just gonna use a two inch thick pad. And now we actually develop the infraspinatus because that also helps to downward depress the humerus head and also helps to roll the humerus head back in position. And if you notice, the key is, is I have my hand a little bit inside the elbow and then I'm coming up and down. And there's some different levels to this where you take the pad off and then eventually you actually bring your elbow in front and you go into this position and there's some weight loads and that's all in the app. And what I found is if, if clients try to do this exercise here, okay, and before some of the rear delt, uh, the Terry's majors develop, they get a lot of front shoulder pain. So that's why we kind of do the infraspinatus in a little bit later stage. Then once they get all those four exercises up to standard and, and in the app, and also if you work with me privately, it's much easier to, to, to get from point A to point B, but once we get all those things fixed and they get to certain weight loads, they can feel in the right spot, then in a later phase, that's when you can start going in and train the serratus. And when I train uh, serratus, I actually like doing pullovers, you know, where you go this way with the weight. I just don't go super far back. A lot of the time, if athletes go way far back, like you see people do where they're really working on the range of motion, they actually disconnect from the serratus and they actually don't develop it that much. So we don't, we don't even go that far back, and we just focus on just basically developing up the serratus and also the, the outside of the lats here, those, those, the wings right through here. 